Have you ever wanted to disappear? Well, Brendan Urie of Panic at the Disco knows that exact feeling. And just like that, my beard, my mustache, everything have disappeared. I'm back in high school wearing the first ever band shirt that I purchased in the year of our Lord 2009. And there's a lot to dive into. Hey neighbor, welcome back to Beyond AR TV. My name is John. We need to talk about this Panic at the Disco situation because as of today, January 24th, 2023, 20 years of Panic at the Disco, not quite. Given that they formed in Las Vegas in 2004, and now 19 years shy of just hitting that two decade mark, Brendan Urie is officially retiring the name Panic at the Disco. This is a move that I and many other fans have been asking for for years, basically saying just drop the Panic at the Disco thing and go Brendan Urie solo, considering he was the only permanent member still in the band. Now that he's actually doing it, it was just all so sudden and unexpected expected Viva Las Vengeance just dropped in the summer of 2022 and now early winter 2023 it's the end by the way, since I know a lot of you are gonna be asking what my wife's feelings are, if you don't know, my wife, who some of you know as Infinity on Hannah, was a massive Panic fan. It was her favorite band at one point in time, them and Fall Out Boy. And in the recent years, it had obviously become a little bit different, but it was still something that she held near and dear to her heart. And I asked if there was anything that she wanted to say or to tell you guys for the video, since she doesn't really make videos anymore. And she essentially said that she's still kind of processing it, grieving the loss because this was something that was very, very important to her and to people like Hannah and uh, other people out there who were huge Panic fans. I'm sorry, I know that this is a big blow, a big loss, but hopefully we'll get some solo music down the line. I 110% understand and respect why Brendan Urie is closing this chapter of the book, but let's go to his statement before I say anything else. Well, it's been a hell of a journey. Growing up in Vegas, I could have never imagined where this life would take me, so many places all over the world and all the friends we've made along the way. But sometimes a journey must end for a new one to begin. We've been trying to keep it to ourselves, though some of you may have heard. Sarah and I are expecting a baby very soon. The prospect of me being a father and getting to watch my wife become a mother is both humbling and exciting. I look forward to this next adventure. That said, I am going to bring this chapter of my life to an end and put my focus and energy on my family. And with that, Panic at the Disco will be no more. Damn it, Brendan, you got me crying in the club over here on a Tuesday. I really didn't know how to process this information, but when I look back, Panic at the Disco played such an important role in my musical journey in my own life, so for that, despite all of the controversies, despite all of the misinformation surrounding Brendan in particular because people just seem to hate him and wish him death at every corner, why wouldn't he retire? He's got the money to, I say do a Jenna Marbles and just go off the internet forever. Joking, but on a real note, Panic at the Disco have meant a lot to me. I've been listening since 2005. I became a fan when the music video channel that used to exist called Fuse, they were playing music videos, alternative ones, and I remember Panic at the Disco, I Write Sins, Not Tragedies coming up, and and I was just so intrigued, enamored actually, by what I was seeing and hearing on screen. What are these dudes wearing? They have this very distinct style. And A Fever You Can't Sweat Out quickly became a favorite album of mine. In fact, one of the first that I ever fell in love with. From there came Pretty Odd, which I still think is their best album. That was the last one that was done as the original band. You know, Ryan Ross was still a primary member. And since 2013, it's pretty much been the Brendan Yeri solo show. So I get where those complaints came from. But even after Pretty Odd, I mean, we got tracks like New Perspective, where literally last night, this is still ringing in my head with the news of today, I fell asleep listening to music around 10 o'clock or so and I dozed off and I woke back up to the song New Perspective in the next morning, Panic announced that they're done? It was a surreal thing. It's one of those no-skip tracks for me and it was a no-brainer to, at the time, wake up to it and just fall back into it and sing the chorus for the millionth time, but now it has a bit of a stranger truth to it considering that Brendan is about to become a father and actually see things from a totally new perspective. From gracing the cover 
cover of Rolling Stone magazine before even Fall Out Boy could get there, which is wild considering Pete Wentz was the one that literally discovered them and signed Panic at the Disco to a record label before they had even played a single live show together. So many gambles were taken on this project, and over the years, everything changed, but Brendan Urie was there at the core of it all, directing, giving input, and eventually taking over as the creative lead. And while many people, including me, have very mixed feelings on certain albums like Pray for the Wicked and even the kind of nothing burger that was Viva Las Vengeance overall, there is still a respect buried in there despite the bad things that have happened, the people in their camp like Zach Cloud Hall and Kenny, whatever the fuck his name was, the people that have exited the band for not very good reasons at all. Essentially, say what you will, but nothing can change or undermine the fact that this was a career that was never supposed to be this big and it definitely wasn't supposed to have a commercial renaissance with tracks like Hey Look Ma I Made It and other singles like High Hopes from Pray for the Wicked really taking off and taking over the world. Panic at the Disco was no flash in the pan and some very talented people came through there like the recent bassist Nicole Rowe is fantastic that's been touring with them and you had Dallin Weeks in the fold for a few albums. Certain tracks off of Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die are definitely Dallin's influence so a lot of people outside of Brendan have contributed to and made this band who they are, and at times that was an amazing output. And also, even if you're harboring intense feelings of hatred towards this band, this project, just, just try to not be a dick for anybody that's out there maybe grieving this loss, or maybe just a chapter of their childhood is coming to a close. Music can very much be a spiritual journey for people as they come of age or go through a certain tumultuous period in life. And I just don't want to sit here and pretend like Panic did nothing good during the solo years. I'm talking like Death of a Bachelor, Pray for the Wicked, Viva Las Vengeance. There were some fantastic tracks in there. And even if we're counting Too Weird to Live, I mean, this is gospel? There's so many memories that I will never forget surrounding Panic at the Disco, whether that be sneaking out of a college class with my at-the-time roommate to go to a Panic show in 2011, or just going to see them with my now wife and actually getting to experience that. We've been kicking ourselves this morning because we didn't get to go to the October 2022 date that we were supposed to go to. We had tickets, but our wedding was like two days after that, and her mom's flight got changed around, and we had to go pick her up from the airport. It didn't happen, essentially. And now knowing that panic is over, that we're never going to see them live as Panic at the Disco, not that the set lists were that amazing, but still, it would have been nice to have that closure. And I feel bad, especially for people like my wife, who they meant so, so much to. Thank you, Brendan Urie. Thank you, Ryan Ross, John Walker, everybody else who came through Panic at the Disco's revolving doors. I really do have a special place in my heart for your music. And now that we say farewell to Panic at the Disco, I want to know how you guys are feeling. Let me know in the comments down below. Were you a massive fan? Were you a massive hater? Somebody that was in between and this is affecting you in a different way? I want to know how everybody's feeling out there. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for the love of music, check out more of my Panic at the Disco videos by tapping here or tap here for another recent track review. All of my socials are in the description and I'll be back soon for more on Beyond ARTV.